And what's up mga champions? Magandang tanghali muli and week 6 na ng ating enhanced community quarantine sa Luzon at ibang bahagi ng ating bansa. Konting kapit pa at kakayanin natin to. Welcome to Mental Health Talks, Protecting Our Mental Health versus COVID-19. Episode 5 na, ito ng series na ginagawa ng Hashtag Mental Health PH in partnership with the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. Mapapanood ninyo ang ating mga previous episodes sa Facebook page at YouTube channel ng Hashtag Mental Health PH. Last episode, pinag-usapan natin ang tungkol sa kung paano ba natin susuportahan ang ating mga frontline healthcare workers na humaharap mismo sa may mga sakit na COVID-19. Ngayon naman, pag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa kung paano nga ba natin maiiwasan ang pakiramdam ng pagkabukod o isolation, depression at mga bagay na nakakasakit sa ating sarili, such as self-harm, sa panahon ngayon ng COVID-19. Muli ako po si Naiko Bautista ng Mental Health PH at ako ang inyong magiging host sa hapong ito. Susubukan natin sagutin ang inyong mga katanungan, kaya naman pakisulat ang inyong mga questions sa ating comment section na makikita sa ilalim ng inyong mga screens. Kung kayo naman po ay nasa Twitter, maaaring pakigamit na lamang po ng hashtag na hashtag MHTalks. At may mga community moderators po tayo online na kumakalap sa inyong mga tanong at itatanong natin ito sa ating guest speaker mamaya. To start off this program, ipapakilala ko na ang ating guest speaker. Siya ay nagtapos ng, medis- ng kanyang um, medisina sa University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center noong 2001. Naging psychiatry resident from 2010 to 2012 sa the Medical City, then Department of Psychiatry at Consultation Days and Psychiatry Fellow naman siya sa Tan Tok Seng Hospital, then Department of Psycholo- Psychological Medicine sa Singapore from 2013 to 2014. Siya ay kasulukuyang naglilingkod ngayon sa Marikina Doctors Hospital and Medical Center, sa Rizal Medical Center at sa the Medical City. Mga champions says all welcome, Dr. Denise Justin L. Santa Maria. Hi, Doc. Hi, Naiko. Thank you very much for having me here. It's such an honor. And I would like to thank Mental Health PH for this endeavor. Ayan. Napaka-relevant po and timely ng ating topic for today. So today, we'll be focusing on isolation, depression, and um, self-harm. So hatiin po natin siya into three segments. So let's start with isolation. Doc, ano po ba yung ibig sabihin natin when we say isolation? Paano ba natin siya madidescribe? Mm-mm. Okay. So during the current um, COVID situation, isolation can mean several things. No? Mm-hmm. So physical isolation means um, kailangan mo ihiwala yung sarili mo para hindi ka mahawa or hindi ka maka-infect na iba tao kung meron kang COVID. Pero this kind of physical isolation um, poses a lot of problems for us right now. Kasi human beings are uh, have this fundamental need to have social contact. no? Mm-hmm. So Kahit hindi mo napansin before yung mga small connections that you have with people outside, yung mga nakakausap mo sa mga stores, yung mga chika-chika ninyo over lunch, no? yung mga hugs na ukuha ninyo sa mga loved ones ninyo. All of these things um, contribute to our everyday well-being. Um, so with this physical kind of isolation comes a psychological kind of isolation, mm-hmm. which is what we call loneliness, no? So loneliness is this emotional state of feeling alone, feeling separated. Um, people can describe it na parang um, they feel empty, they feel invisible, insignificant, no? Walang halaga, no? And when you feel lonely, you start to um, it starts to make you think negatively, na parang siguro lonely ako kasi I'm unlovable or inabandon ako ng ibang tao when in fact you are lonely right now because kailangan mong um, protektahan na sarili mo from COVID. No? So, loneliness is not bad per se. Um, kumbaga, it's just a signal telling you na kailangan mo lang mag-reconnect. No? Mm-hmm. However, given the COVID situation, kung magiging chronic man ito, yung pag-social distancing natin at hindi natin alam kung hanggang kailan matatapos, um, the loneliness can develop into a type of depression or nagiging trigger siya sa depression. Oh. So yun, i-highlight na natin, Doc, na this is kind of a timeline or para may progress siya, no? Na parang starting from isolation, it could lead to depression. Yeah. And yung i-highlight din natin later, it could lead to self-harm or something that is really serious na. Correct. And um, so, Doc, ngayon, paano naman po, um, kasi marami sa atin na nahiwalay 
sa ating mm-hmm. families, Spe- especially for the students who come from different parts of the country. Marami kasi na parang sinabi na magkakaroon pa ng online classes and since meron mga um, students na walang internet connection sa kanilang mga provinces, they chose to stay in the metro. And marami sa kanila na iwan at nahiwalay nga sa kanilang mm-hmm. pamilya. So how can we help a friend who is isolated from their family during this lockdown? Mm-mm. So, napakahirap talaga no, ng panahon ngayon kasi um, talagang we are not mobile, no? Hindi natin mm-hmm. mapupuntahan yung mga mahal natin sa buhay. So, yung, yung role tuloy ng internet at ng technology ay sobrang mahalaga talaga ngayon. Yes. So, if you have that, that is such a huge uh, help to you, no? So, ang role mo ngayon is to be like a family member and be constant in connecting with that person Mm-hmm. online or virtually no um pero we don't want to be pushy naman doon sa taong yon you you ask that friend kung kailan o kung paano niya gusto na mag-reach out ka sa kanya pwedeng video chat pwedeng through text messaging kung yun yung gusto niya no um some experts say that ideally sana may one two three virtual um, social connections kayo per day para ma-maintain mo yung feeling na parang uh, you are uh, not alone. No? Um, you can also try to encourage them to join group chats. No? Mm. Yung group chat maganda eh kasi doon mo na share yung mga pinagdadaanan ninyo, yung mga frustrations ninyo. Yes. No? Mga little things like yung mag-share kayo ng mga recipe ninyo. Yeah. No? <laughs> diba? Yung mag-share ng mga funny na online content, malaking bagay yung, yung ganun. Mm-hmm. Basta yung ma, maparamdam mo lang dun sa tao na hindi siya nag-iisa. No? Mm-hmm. Ang kagandaan rin sa technology, ang dami natin pwedeng gawin. Like, manood ka ng Netflix movie na magkasama mm-hmm. kayong dalawa habang yes. nag-chat kayong Ma- dalawa sa phone, kumakain yeah. kayong popcorn, no? yung magdi-dinner kayo together through Zoom, no? magi-exercise together through online yoga. So, ang daming opportunity sa internet na pwede nating magamit. No? Another thing, pwede ka rin magpadala kasi through delivery. Kung mm-hmm. mga care packages, kumbaga, no? yung food, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, medicine or anything that your friend needs, pwede mo ipadala. Yes, ayan. aside from establishing an open communication. So yun nga, pwede rin na parang we can show our um, care to that person by giving them some yung needs yeah. nila, like physio- uh, physiological needs nila. Okay, so now doc, um, kasi for those people naman who are with their families right now, hindi kasi natin may iwasan na may mga family members tayo na hindi naman ganun ka talagang ka-close dun sa family nila. Um, okay. Some would even um, label themselves as parang off yung vibes nila. Sa family they have like an avoidant type of um, a- approach to their family or they are emotionally distant. Now, what can we do to cope with these um, avoidant and emotionally di- uh, distant members of the family during this ECQ? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, so, being at home all the time is actually very stressful para sa buong pamilya. Hindi tayo kasi sanay na magkakasama tayong lahat for such a long time in, such, in a very confined space. Mm-hmm. Dati nung nakakalabas tayo, nakakompartmentalize yung buhay natin, no? Yes. Pupunta ka sa trabaho, nakaka-focus ka sa trabaho mo lang. Nakakapunta ka sa school, nakaka-focus ka lang sa pag-aaral mo. And pag uwi mo sa bahay, yung focus mo is spending time with your kids or your family members and doing household chores. Pero ngayon, ang nangyayari is wala nang boundaries na gano'n, no? So, you're juggling everything all at once, no? Um, very, it's very, very stressful. Kaya ang nangyayari is talagang yung, yung tempers ng mga tao pwedeng tumaas, no? Mm-hmm. Yung mga tao na, na hindi mag, ma, nagkakaugnayan, walang choice kundi mag, ano, no? Ma, mag, magbangayan, no? Yeah. Oh, correct. There are some other people naman na, they they would choose to be emotionally distant kasi ayaw na nila ng major confrontation no or ayaw na nila na maging pabigat kung may nararamdaman sila na stress and um sometimes there are other people ren who may seem emotionally distant kasi mm-hmm. yung kunari mga introvert say no biologically madali silang ma-overstimulate from mm-hmm. too much things happening in their environment um so that is their way of 
maintaining their energy and sanity. Mm -hmm. yeah? So I think the first thing that you need to do is understand that the, that other person needs a lot of space. You know? mm -hmm. And this space that you give is something that you should not resent. This is something that you should not overthink. Na parang, oh, hindi siya nagsasalita. Ibig sabihin ba nun? Wala siyang pakailam sa akin. Ini-ignore ba niya ako? No? Um, because most often than not, ginagawa lang nila yan for self-preservation talaga. No? Mm -hmm. So, allow them um, a certain amount of time to just be on their own habang ikaw, pwede mo na sigurong kargado yung mga gawain sa bahay, pag-aalaga sa mga bata, no? and respecting that space. And, Ikaw rin, gusto mo rin, may ganun ka din. No? Yun mm -hmm. din yung maibibigay niya sa'yo. No? Um, just as important na meron kang space, personal space, you also need to find time during the day to be able to connect. Mm -hmm. no? Kailangan nyo talaga makipag-usap no? ng maayos. Um, you might need to initiate the conversation kung hindi komportable yung tao na yon yung emotionally distant na person no pero if you can try to do it in a very non-judgmental um non-threatening way para mas madali para sa kanila medyo mag-open up ng konti mm -hmm. no so try not to hurl resentments at each other no parang ikaw ako na lang lagi nagbabantay ng bata ikaw ganito nakita mm -hmm. no? so, mo as much as possible we don't do that no um try to understand how each other feels and mm -hmm. try to work out together kung paano nyo matutulungan ang isa't isa. No? Talagang communication is very important talaga. No? Kung meron man mga konting hirit no? mm -hmm. na yung hindi natin na uh, gugustuhan, have the grace to kind of let it go. No? Kasi most often than not, it's not an intentional thing na para saktan ka, kundi yun lang yung paraan minsan na nalilet out nila yung stress. No? Mm -hmm. If there are certain emotional needs that you want your partner or your family member to to provide, you have to be very explicit about it. No? Mm -hmm. You have to say, kung pagod na ako, ikaw naman yung gumawa nito. No? Mm -hmm. Or gusto ko lang muna magkulong sa kwarto at matulog muna habang ginagawa. So be very explicit mm -hmm. para alam nila kung paano ka tutulungan. And be ready to give that help as well to that other mm -hmm. person. No, no. I have a question po. Paano natin ma-differentiate yung pagiging para emotionally distant, like yung pagiging introvert ng isang tao, compared to um, paano kung yung tao na mismo, nakakaranas na pala siya ng loneliness niya na sinasabi natin kanina. Na, kasi maaaring iba yung pagkakakilala ko dito sa taong to, and right, ngayon, right. nagbago siya. So pa pa paano natin oh, siya ma-distinguish? Kasi uh -oh. baka mamaya, that person, yung parang pagiging emotionally distant ng tao, it, it was already a call for help. Pero paano natin siya may de-differentiate? Correct. Well, if you if that person is naturally introverted, you mm -hmm. would know na, okay, ganyan talaga siya. No? Oh. Kung tahimik talaga yan, you won't be so alarmed na parang sanay ka na kasi na ganyan na yung ugali niya. Mm -hmm. Pero if you start to feel that there is something different, kung dating yung kinakausap ka naman kahit pa paano, the usual jolly person, biglang may sudden change no in the mood, which is persistent every day. Halos hindi mo na makakausap. No? And mm -hmm. I think what's important is you really have to ask no na, Uy, okay ka lang ba? How are you? Na, mm -hmm. Napansin ko na parang nag-iba yung, yung mood mo or parang hindi ka na masyada nagsasalita ngayon. Is there something going on inside your mind? Baka mm -hmm. sa kalima, tulungan kita. So you have to really reach out and explicitly say na parang ito yung mga napapansin mo. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully kung meron nga siyang pinagdadaanan, ay masabi niya na talaga sa'yo. Uh, so para it's a way for us to open the communication. So the importance of the word kumusta in the oh, Filipino culture. Talaga. Okay. Oh, oh. Ayan. Now doc, ito naman po. Um, this is um, from a crowdsourced um, question. Pa paano po kasi yung um, person po natin, yung dad niya is an OFW. And hindi naman mm -hmm. po siya kasi makauwi dito sa Pilipinas. Kasi syempre naka-lockdown right. pa tayo. So pa paano right. daw po na ma- um, paano doon lang mako-comfort yung dad nila na nakahiwalay and paano naman po na sila na isolated from that loved one so paano mm -hmm. po yung gagawin nila for that okay so 
alam mo na awa ako dun sa mga OFW, no? Talagang um, malayo ka na, mag-isa ka pa, mm-hmm. isolated ka pa, no? Yes. Doon sa kinatitirahan mo, no? Um, so, they experience a lot of stress, homesickness, no? Worry about yung safety ng pamilya na kam- kamusta kaya sila, mai-infect ba sila, sana hindi. May mapapadala pa ba akong pera? Magiging okay pa kaya yung trabaho ko, no? So, all of these things really add on to a lot of stress for our OFWs, no? Mm-hmm. And, um, again, the biggest comfort talaga is for the family to be, to to show their presence and constantly be there through virtual communication. Yun talaga mm-hmm. yung sobrang importante sa lahat. Um, I think the biggest comfort for an OFW parent is to know that everything is okay at home. No? So, constantly reassure them that, right, dad, mom, um, ginagawa namin lahat para masundan namin yung mga precautions. We're making sure that we are healthy, nakakakain kami ng maayos, no? Mm-hmm. Para, para ma- maibsan yung, yung uh, worries nila, no? Um, try to communicate to them that there is nothing to be worried about, no? Kung ano man mangyari, nandiyan ang suporta ng pamilya para sa kanila, mm-hmm. no? In this situation, um, yung, yung parent, um, you try to encourage na kung meron silang sa loobin na gusto nilang i-share o gusto nilang ilabas sa inyo, that you will always be there to listen to them, no? Mm-hmm. Um, and ang kagandahan rin sa ano sa technology they can also um, continue their parenting through yes. virtual communication no so as a parent you can be present during dinner no dinner time yes. again yung manonood kayo ng Netflix together as a family mm-hmm. yung homeschooling pwede kang magturo ng anak mo no turuan mo sila ng bagong hobby pwede ikaw yung mag-storytelling time dun sa mga maliliit na bata. Yes. So, you can continue doing your parenting even if it's a long distance. No? Um, also, try to remind your OFW family members to to do a lot of self-care. So, kung mm-hmm. offline sila, no, make sure that they're getting a lot of rest, they're eating well, they're exercising yes. in their confined space, making sure they're taking care of their bodies, no trying to find diversions no para maalis yung 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 utak nila doon sa mga inaalala nila yung mga bagay na sa ngayon hindi mo pa makokontrol no so try to yun again try to pursue self care activities oh okay so parang doc i i just like to highlight the idea na hindi lamang basta open communication yung pwede nating gawin for the people who are away from us but then trying to um reassure them kung uh, reassure them then na kung ano yung mga nangyayari sa atin and okay naman kami dito kasi it would really help with their isolation then okay now doc ito po from the side of those people who would like to help paano po natin malalaman yung limits natin especially kasi baka mamaya nag-overexert na po tayo sa pagtulong natin or baka ang dating naman ay nakakatakot na baka abusuhin naman yung pagtulong ko. Oh, so ano po yung dapat natin gawin doon? Okay. If we are talking about um, the context of providing emotional help, no? Um, lahat kasi tayo naniniwala tayo na in order to be a good friend, you have to be a good listener, no? You yes. have to be a shoulder to cry on, no? For someone who's going through a difficult time. Pero sometimes kasi it, become, it becomes problematic kung yung kaibigan na yun ay patuloy na, kumbaga, dinadump na, no? Mm-hmm. Or tinatapo na lahat sa'yo, lahat ng pain, lahat ng unhappiness nila, no? to the point na hindi na nila nare-recognize yung limitations nila. Okay. Like, for example, odd hours of the day, tumatawag sa'yo. Isa, dalawang oras, no? Kinakausap ka sa telepono, paulit-ulit yung mga sinasabi, no? Taking so much of your time, no? Without showing any interest kung ikaw kamusta ka, no? Mm-hmm. So, parang at the thing, may pagka-selfish, no? Um... You, you become what is known as a kind of emotional toilet, no? Ikaw yung tambakan na lahat ng sama ng loob. So, eventually, you start to dread these kinds of conversations, no? Kasi parang napaka one-sided, nakakapagod, no? Napaka-unsatisfying on your end. Okay? Pero, for some reason, 
hindi ka makapigil kasi you feel guilty na parang mm. hindi ako nakinig, hindi, hindi ako mabuting kaibigan sa kanya. Yes. Na? Now, the question is, um, what does it mean to be supportive? Mm. Kasi kung patuloy-tuloy lang itong pag-dumping, pag-dump niya ng mga problema niya sa'yo, no? na ikaw, kin- lagi ka lang nakikinig, um, saying words of sympathy, pero mm-hmm. you notice that no personal growth is happening. That person is not doing anything to make their situation better. Um, parang nafe-feel mo may lack of insight na paulit-ulit niyang ginagawa yung mga mistakes, mm-hmm. no? Very predictable na yung pattern. Um, kahit na ina-advise mo, ganun pa rin yung ginagawa niya. Yes. No? So, very toxic yung mga ganitong klaseng relationships, no? Mm-hmm. So, in order to be a good friend, you have to encourage kasi that person to, you have to, to lead that person to personal growth, no? Yes. You have to be honest, no? And be frank na, alam mo, mali kasi talaga ang ginagawa mo. Ito talaga yung dapat mong gawin. No? Be, mm-hmm. be very direct about it. And do not tolerate the bad behavior to always repeat and repeat itself. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, ikaw, pag, pag umabot rin sa point na ikaw sobrang emotionally stressed ka na rin on your own at yeah. hindi mo na kaya yung burden ng ibang tao, then you just have to stop. No? Yes. You have to stop and focus on taking care of yourself. And you just have to be honest na, you know, um, I've tried my best to help you, but I can only do so much. So, yes. is it okay if we ask help from someone else, no? preferably a professional, na pwede makatulong sa'yo instead? Mm-hmm. No? So, that's something that you can actually tell your friend. Na, minsan, merong mga kaibigan na nasasaktan no? yes, sa mga sasabihin mo pag nagiging honest ka. Um, pwedeng iwanan nila yung friendship no ayaw na nila makipag-usap sa and it may hurt a little bit no but don't don't take this personally kasi ultimately it's their decision kung gusto nila magbago mm-hmm. um or maghahanap lang sila ng ibang tao na pagbubuhusan nila na sama ng loob nila ulit um so might as well use your time and all your effort to focus on meaningful relationships and na feel mo na two-sided, no? Pati ikaw uh, inaalagaan at sila rin may concern sa'yo. Mm-hmm. So parang more on, um, if ever na we're going to um, present this to that person in the most dip- diplomatic way possible, yeah. you always yeah. have to remember din na um, you can't really give something that you don't have. So you really can't right. support right. someone kung ikaw din mismo right. kulang din sa support. So you always have to take care of yourself din. So, we always have to focus na hindi, hindi po pwede na bigay lamang tayo ng bigay. Kailangan ay meron muna tayong ibibigay oh, bago natin to ibigay. Correct. Kasi hindi totoo, ang weird din naman yun. <laughs> okay, now, Doc, okay. sige, let's move to another part. So, from isolation, sabi nga natin kanina, it could lead to loneliness. And now, we go into a more serious matter, which is depression. Now, Doc, Mm-mm. Ano po ba yung depression and ano po yung pinagkaiba niya sa tinatawag nating sadness or yung loneliness niya? Mm-mm. Okay. So sadness is it's a normal emotion, no? Mm-hmm. That is usually triggered by something difficult or hurtful, something mm-hmm. challenging or disappointing that happens to us, no? Mm-hmm. So we always feel sad about something. So laging may dahilan kung bakit tayo nalulungkot. However, happiness usually ends, no? Pag nakaramdam na tayo na nakaka-adjust na tayo yes. or um yung nakahanap na tayo ng solusyon doon sa problema, kung time has already passed and healed, you know, the mm-hmm. emotional wound inside of you. No? Sadness is usually something that is transient. No? Mm. Um, yes. So right now, we feel sad about the COVID situation. But many of us find ways to cope and continue on with our, you know, with our new way of life. Yeah. Depression of Man, on the other hand, yun, definitely it's a mental illness. No? Mm-hmm. It's an abnormal emotional state that affects everything in our lives. Apektado yung pag-iisip natin, yung emotions natin, yung pananaw natin sa mga bagay-bagay, at saka yung behavior natin. No? It's very deeply profound. It's all-encompassing. Mm-hmm. No? Hindi lang siya simpleng nalulungkot ka lang palagi. 
um, you can feel a lot of things like emptiness, mm-hmm. nagiging irritable, no? you feel exhausted or tired, um, you start to feel different things in your body. For example, your energy levels mo laging bagsak, hindi ka makatulog na maayos sa gabi, mm-hmm. hindi ka makakain, no? or it can be the opposite, sobra naman sa tulog, sobra sa kain. Nafe-feel mo na parang palaging negatibo yung yung pananaw mo sa mga bagay-bagay kahit na walang basis, no? Mm-hmm. Um, nawawalan ka ng motivation, nawawalan ka ng uh, concentration na gawin mm-hmm. yung mga kailangan mong gawin ng mga bagay, no? Um, when it becomes so severe, umaabot sa punto na you start to feel intense uh, guilt, or mm-hmm. intense feelings of hopelessness. And ang worry kasi natin dito is, if it gets really bad, it can develop into suicidal thoughts, no? Mm-hmm. Or yung, uh, yung su- suicidal attempt, no? So, yung depression, hindi lang ito psychological na sakit, ito ay biological na sakit. So, physically, nagkakaroon ng mga chemical imbalances, nagkakaroon yeah. ng hormonal changes. No? So, that's why it's very important na ma-address ito through treatment or therapy mm-hmm. no, with a professional. Mm-hmm. Ayun. No, Doc, question din, kasi it has been a common theme in social media na parang mm-hmm. they post na parang I am depressed or yes. parang I am sad. Kasi they usually interchange these two words na pa, kailan po natin masasabi or parang masasabi na okay lang na mag-post tayo about um, depression itself and ano po yung parang maring repercussions kasi some people use it loosely eh na parang mailabas nila na parang I am depressed right now so what what could we do as people who are receiving the information Mm-mm. Okay. So when we are when we see yung mga status update no ng mga kaibigan natin na na-dead depressed sila. Mm-hmm. Um pwedeng hindi lahat sa kanila depressed talaga. Yes. Pwedeng malungkot lang tapos yung paraan ng pag-share nila is medyo inexaggerate lang nila ng konti mm-hmm. no. Pero you know what? Um if you are in doubt, you have to err in the side of caution, no. It wouldn't hurt to maybe send a personal message to that person and kamustahin yeah. no uy okay ka lang ba nabasa ko dun sa status update mo na nade-depress ka pwede mo ba ikwento sa akin kung ano yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon ano yung nararamdaman mo mm-hmm. baka sakali makatulong ako and when that person is able to share mm-hmm. na hindi lang pala simpleng lungkot lang yung nararamdaman no at na share niya na lahat pala ng mga aspeto sa buhay niya ay may simptomas na ng depression, yeah. no? Hindi na gumagalaw, nakahiga na lang palagi, ayaw na makipag-usap, hindi na nagagawa yung mga pang-araw-araw na gawain niya, nag-iisip na pala na parang ayaw na niya, no? Mm-hmm. Ayaw na niya mabuhay. Then that's when we we realize na, ay, oo nga, depressed nga pala talaga siya, mm-hmm. no? So yun, so again, Okay, depressed nga talaga siya or hindi. It's so much better to double check kung yes. depressed nga talaga siya. Mm-hmm. Ayun. So parang the point really is for us not to discredit whatever right. that person is posting. Kasi we have to be on the side of caution. Kasi hindi talaga, right. well, well right. we don't have any um parang way for us to assess kung talaga bang depressed yung isang tao. I mean, we don't have the clinical knowledge for that. And um, siguro dun nga din natin ma-open na parang it would be best for them to seek for professional help if ever na it will get out of hand na. Mm. Ayun. Now, Doc, ito po, kasi um, it is a general theme also in the family that um, kids or parang the young generation, hindi sila um, parang mas, ma- mas magaan daw ang buhay ng mga bata kumpara sa pinagdadaanan ng mga matatanda. Now, the question is how do these people or how do these kids or the younger generation open up about these feelings of depression or loneliness to their parents. Kasi, syempre, meron tayong fear na baka i-discredit lang or hindi mo alam kung paano yung magiging reaction ng mga kapamilya mo kapag sinabi mo na may problema po ako or ganito po yung nararanas. Mm-mm. Okay. So, ngayong pandemic, no, 
Um, mm-hmm. Hindi lang yung buhay ng mga adults yung nagbabago ng matinde. Malaki ang impact nito sa buhay ng mga bata. Yes. And our children also suffer a lot of major losses in their lives. No? Um, you have to understand that they are also very social beings as well. No? Namimiss nila yung mga kaibigan nila. Namimiss mm-hmm. nila yung nakikita. Na, na, uh, namimiss nila yung uh, yung nakakalabas, nakakalaro mm-hmm. sa playground, stretching out their, you know, their limbs, no? Mm-hmm. Um, they they also have a lot of stress at home. Kasi yung bahay kasi na-associate nila sa, you know, leisure time with your parents, no? Na pwede ka makipaglaro sa parents. E ngayon yung mga magulang kasi kailangan magtrabaho no mm-hmm. kailangan magtrabaho sa bahay so minsan nasusungitan pa no kapag niyayaya ng mga anak na maglaro sila yes, no? so this is um, a very stressful um, situation for them in Silaren, they are also prone to developing depression because mm-hmm. of the major changes that happen in the uh, currently no so ang mga bata minsan nahihirapan na maging open sa mga magulang kasi they worry that they would not be taken seriously by the mm-hmm. by the family uh, by the parents kasi like what you mentioned before di ba ang mga magulang iniisip ano pa ba ang hihingiin mo eh komportable ka dito sa bahay mm-hmm. no yes. kakain ka naman na maayos wala kang ang school ngayon no pero um, again like i mentioned before they also suffer a lot of losses in their lives as well yes. no so, malaki ang role ng magulang no in trying to detect if their kids are um, experiencing depression. So, if your kid um, approaches you and says na parang hindi sila masaya or nalulungkot sila sa sitwasyon, you have to um, be able to talk to them in such a way na hindi nyo sila ginajudge, yes. hindi nyo sila minamak, no? or yung parang niloloko or nire-resent yung mga sinasabi nila no and instead you have to be very non-judgmental you have to listen carefully to them no mm-hmm. um you have to really um uh, communicate in such a way na um magtutulungan kayong dalawa kung paano niyo magagawa ng paraan no mm-hmm. so you also have to be very observant with your children's behavior Minsan, hindi sila talaga magsasabi kasi hindi nila alam na depressed sila. Pero if you notice na parang hindi na siya masyadong palasalita, hindi yeah. masyadong magpalaro, no? yung energy level bagsak, no? ayaw kumain, hindi natutulog ng maayos, yung itsura niya mukhang malungkot, pero you know what, yung pinaka-common na mood ng mga bata when they're depressed is very irritable sila. No? Yung mm-hmm. lagi umiiyak, laging galit. No? Um, if they start to hurt themselves as well, head banging, no, punching themselves, mm-hmm. punching, you know, hard objects. So when you notice all of these things, um, you have to you have to really look for ways to to address them, and you have mm-hmm. to seek professional help, no. And luckily, right now we have telepsychiatry, um, so that you can access help from a child adolescent psychiatrist, no. So, on your own as a parent, no, aside from having open communication, one-on-one time with a child, mm-hmm. um, try to um, structure your yung everyday schedule nila para mabalance mo yung work, yung work mm-hmm. time mo with play time with them. They need to feel that you are spending quality time with them, no. Mm-hmm. Um, try to create activities that would perk up their interest, no? Para ma-divert yung attention nila from feeling sad or feeling stressed to something that is, you know, um, something that would make them enjoy or would make them happy. Mm-hmm. Um, don't pressure them so much with, kasi ngayon, yung dahil may homeschooling, no? Na nagpapadala yung mga teacher na mga worksheet ka. Don't pressure them so much anymore na dapat masagot mo to lahat. Dapat magawa mo to assignment mo. Kasi, ngayon kasi they're emotionally adjusting to the COVID situation, no? Yeah. So, hintayin muna natin na ma-stabilize na muna nila yung pakiramdam nila bago nila natin dagdagan yung stress or yung pressure sa kanila. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And be aware of how you react, no? 
be aware of yung temper mo no yung wag yung biglang sasabog na lang mm-hmm. as much as possible make your interactions together kalmado ka or cool headed ka no? so yon and also try to arrange virtual play dates with the friends mm-hmm. no para naman yung mga naminis nila ay nakakausap nila at nakakalaro mm-hmm. nila so yun parang i-highlight din natin na parang social beings pa rin naman sila hindi yun basta-basta lang na kayo mga may access lang sa internet kayo lang yung makipag-usap sa friends niyo they also have friends and hindi lang kayo yung mga parents nila or those people within the family sila lang yung maaring maka-interact ng bata now doc what can i do to cope with depression and suicidal thoughts on my own kung ako naman po mismo yung wala po akong access na makausap na may makausap ako or hindi ako comfortable na makipag-usap sa mga kakilala ko. So, ano pwede kong gawin kapag gano'n? Um, kung, if you are suffering from depression, lalo na kung may suicidal thoughts, no? Um, mm. And you are alone, you are forced to be alone, no? Yes. Makahirap talaga kasi, um, Una, walang nakaka-monitor o nakaka-observe kung nag-worsen yung condition mo. Or wala yung physically natutulong talaga sa'yo. So, mm. in a way, you are solely responsible for taking care of yourself. No? Yes. Um, first of all, um, kung mahirap para sa'yo makipag-usap sa ibang tao, um, you have to understand na napaka-importante kasi na meron kang kausap. No? Yes, please. Um kasi kailangan mo ng suporta, kailangan mo ng hingahan, mm-hmm. um, kailangan mo ng i-unload yung uh, problema mo, kailangan mo ng tulong na i-figure out kung paano um, pagdaanan yung problema mo. No? I know that a lot of depressed people have tried to reach out to family no? or nafe-feel nila na parang hindi nila nakukuha yung gusto nilang tulong dun sa mga tao. Mm-hmm. No? So, kung wala kay ibang choice, please try to reach out to our psychiatrists online para sure tayo na yung kailangan natin na tulong o yung gusto nating marinig na salita ay makukuha natin dito sa mga professionals na to. Mm-hmm. No? Um, Uh, a lot of people also tend to not say anything kasi ayun lang ma-burden yung family, no? Pero you know what? Your family loves you enough to mm-hmm. carry that burden with you in a very yes. loving way, no? So don't underestimate yung kakayahan ng pamilya mo na tulungan ka, no? Mm-hmm. Kasi if you were in their position, kung meron ka namang kapamilya na nade-depress, hindi pa ikaw din gusto mo rin silang tulungan. Yes, no? So you have to give them a chance to be able to support you no? mm-hmm. and ease some of your burden. Okay? So aside from talking to someone, no? kahit ayaw mo, no? you really need to talk yes. to someone. Um, you, on your own, you have to look for different ways to take care of yourself. Like mm-hmm. I mentioned kanina, no? um, try to create a lot of self-care activities. No? Um, try to ano <laughs> no Masa- you know foot massage you know a warm bath reading a very good book no um listening to relax relaxing music no all of these things can help try to create a routine para there is something that you can look forward to and mafi-feel mo pa rin na meaningful pa rin yung ginagawa mo every day no kasi sometimes people tend to feel depressed kung na feel nila na walang purpose yung buhay nila no mm-hmm. and every day kasi na nagpapatuloy tong social distancing na feel mo talaga na parang ah, nawawala na purpose yung buhay ko no um try to meditate or um some find some sort sort of breathing or muscle relaxation techniques we have that in our website sa medical city no on youtube so that's something that you can use na Ayan. Ayan, thank you, Doc. Now, um, before time mag-continue sa ating talakayan, I would just like to remind everyone that if you have any questions, um, our comment section is available. Nakas- um, nandun lamang sa ating ilarim ng screen. You can type your questions there and our community moderators will get them and itatanong din natin ito sa ating guest speaker. Now, um, kung nasa Twitter naman kayo, you can also use hashtag MHTalks and our community moderators will get those questions for you. Now, balik tayo sa ating... Um, Now, we focus on a very serious matter, which is self-harm. Now, Doc, 
ano po ba yung self-harm? And ano yung maaaring maging triggers natin for self-harm itself? Mm-mm. Okay. So, self-harm is the act of deliberately hurting yourself by inflicting pain or causing injury. No? Mm-hmm. So, some common ways of self-harming would be you know, cutting your skin with a sharp object, um, yes. hitting different parts of your body, punching, no? head banging. Um, itong mga, itong behavior na to, usually, hindi naman intention ng isang tao na uh, magpakamatay, no? But usually, this is intended to be able to uh, relieve the build-up of um, a lot of pressure, yung, yung intense and distressing thoughts and feelings mm-hmm. na nararamdaman ng isang tao. For example, nakakaramdam siya ng intense na anger, guilt, sadness, shame, no? Um, self-harming is a quick way to be able to feel um, calm or to relieve tension when there mm-hmm. is emotional overload. No? Yun nga lang yung problem sa self-harming, pagkatapos mo ma-feel yung temporary relief, saka naman da- dadating yung feelings of guilt and feelings of shame. No? Na parang mm-hmm. bakit ko na naman nagawa yun sa sarili ko. No? Napaka walang kwenta ko talagang tao. No? And yung mga thoughts na yun and feelings would then... Um, Isa na naman yung mag initiate ng no, mga future yeah. episodes of self-harming. So, as you can see, it's a very it's vicious right. cycle. Yes. O, o, vicious cycle siya. So, self-harming is usually indicative of mental health issues. Uh, yung mga taong may ganito, usually may trauma, no? Lalo mm-hmm. na childhood trauma. Pwedeng may depression sila, um, anxiety disorder. Or meron yeah. silang personality traits na hindi... Uh, hindi maigi yung pag uh, yung pag adjust nila sa adversity no mm-hmm. so anything can trigger anything stressful can trigger this um the covid situation can trigger self harm um any kind of work school stress bullying um mm-hmm. feeling uh feelings of low self esteem no um relationship problems financial yeah. problems having an illness all of those things can trigger self harm Mm. Ayan, Doc. Now, yun, as na-mention yun na nga rin po kanina na parang COVID-19 itself can be um, a trigger for self-harm. Now, Doc, paano po, yung, um, paano po naging trigger yung COVID-19 itself? Kasi we would like to understand how this pandemic itself could could make us, para maari na, maaring maka-apekto rin yun sa atin talaga. Mm-mm. Okay. So, yung COVID-19 situation can be a trigger for suicide because again it it's so stressful no um it really creates a lot of stress in all aspects of our lives mm. so nakaka-depress siya kasi yun you lose control of a lot of things in your life yung mobility mo yung capacity mo to work you lose mm-hmm. your freedom to be able to go out and pursue the things um that interest you or that make you enjoy no um usually um yung pag umaabot kasi sa punto na matindi yung stress no at hindi talaga na natin kinakaya um your your mood becomes so severe that you start to think very negatively no na parang pagkatapos ng covid na to siguro wala mawawala na ako ng trabaho hindi mm. ko na mabubuhay yung pamilya ko no na parang you feel hopeless about hopeless, your situation, yeah. no? So when that hopelessness sets in, um, that's when the suicidal thoughts um, happen, no? Na parang, dahil hindi ko na kaya, gusto ko na napakamatay kasi, hindi, ano eh, it's the easiest way out na of this situation, no? So talagang very strong trigger talaga for suicide yung COVID. Yung COVID-19, uh, yes. Oh. Parang it, it's a very multifactorial right. um, problem. And Correct. one way for us to um, parang attack this um, situation is very multifactorial mm-hmm. din. Hindi naman siya basta-basta lamang natin na titingnan na ito lang yung pwede natin gawin. Marami tayong maaaring um, maging tulong para sa mga tao na maaaring nagsiself-harm because of the COVID-19 mm-hmm. pandemic. Now, Doc, is there an association of posting sad memes and social media? Kasi it's very common right now na Marami sa atin sa mga um, younger generation nagpo-post sila ng mga um, infographics or para mga, co- mga comics na nag- may mga subliminal meanings and pumapasok na yung idea of self-harm. 
Now, meron po bang um, connection to sa suicidal ideations? And is it okay for us to post things like this? Okay. So, most likely not everyone who posts the sad memes are depressed or suicidal. Mm -hmm. no? Pero yung what we have to be aware of is baka merong maliit na porsyento sa mga nagpo-post na yun who are actually depressed and suicidal. No? Kasi this could be their indirect way of trying to seek help it's from us. Yeah. No? It's a cry for help. Um without being very direct about it. No? Kasi, ika nga, ang depressed na tayo, tao, ayaw nga nilang mag-burden ng ibang tao. No? Mm -hmm. So, they won't explicitly say. No? So, kung one out of 100 man na mga tao na nagpo-post ng sad memes ay depressed at suicidal, kailangan natin ma-detect yung isang tao na yun. No? Mm -hmm. yes. So, as a friend, um, as someone who is able to see that meme, Again, it's very important that you re reach out to that person. No? Like yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Yes. You send a personal message. So don't be, ano, you don't have to be, you know, um, very public about it. Send mo ng personal message. Mm -hmm. Uy, nakita ko itong sad meme na to. Ano, ano yung ibig sabihin nito? Um, may pinagdadaanan ka ba? No? Konektado ba ito sa buhay mo? At pinagdadaanan mm -hmm. mo ngayon? No? So... Hopefully, that would be an avenue for that person to open up and directly say na, oo, meron nga akong pinagdadaanan, kailangan ko ng tulong. No? Mm. So, it's very important that you check up on that person kung nakikita niyo itong mga sad memes na ito. Ayan. So, para, it's, it's also a reminder for us not to discredit these things na maaring hindi siya explicit na sinasabi na I am sad or I am depressed. Kasi it's a common theme for us Filipinos na para we insert humor and a lot Correct. of the things yes. that we do. Yes. So, maaaring parang right. pasaring lamang siya, pero hindi natin siya po pwedeng pabayaan na lamang. If we right. think that right. the, these things are kind of connected to self-harm or suicidal ideations, well, dun papasok yung isang napakalakas na salita, which is, kumusta? Diba? So, we get to connect with those people and try to open a channel for communication with them. Ayan. Now, Doc, we have a lot of questions from social media right now. Um, our Facebook Live is really booming. And ito po, we have questions. Um, this one is from April Dadol from Facebook. Paano po ba makontrol ang inner sadness? Kasi ayaw naman daw po niya maging irritable, pero di daw talaga niya makontrol yung sarili niya. Ano po yung po pwede niya mm. gawin this? Okay. So, if you feel very angry, no, yung parang gusto mong magwala, gusto mong sumigaw, gusto mong magalit, no, um, itong anger kasi this is a natural emotion to have if you're going through something difficult. Um, hindi mo talaga mabablock or mapipigilan yung nararamdaman mo. Pero you know what? What really matters in the long run is the behavior that you put out there given the emotion that you have. Your mm -hmm. response to what you are feeling is what really matters. No? So if you are feeling very angry, I hope you are able to to find a way to be able to hold that anger no? and try to think about the best um, response that you can give at that very moment. No? Um, kung hindi kinakaya, try to um, to go to a certain space. Lumayo ka muna dun sa taong kausap mo. No? Mm -hmm. Bigyan mo muna yung sarili mo ng, ng oras o panahon para kumalma. Tapos yes. pag medyo okay, okay ka na, then balikan mo yung tao at pag-usapan ninyo ng maayos or ng kalmado yung problema na kailangan nyo ayusin. No? So, um, so yun. So, try to remove yourself from that situation that will make you behave in such a way na hindi mo magugustuhan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, kung sanay ka na laging naninigaw, no? Um, it will take a lot of practice talaga yes. no? to, to be able to respond um, uh, in a calm manner. Pero um, you can try to look for ways para ma matulungan yung sarili mo in that way. Yung meditation, no? that's something that you can use para ma-exercise mo yung part of the brain that is able to control all of those strong mm -hmm. emotions. No? Mm -hmm. So again, um, it, it helps you um, build up that uh, 
ability na magkaroon ng emotional space sa kay mo hawakan yung yung anger no yung negative emotion na yon at mapag-isipan ng maigi ko ano yung pinaka mainam na paraan na pwede kang mag-respond doon sa sitwasyon na pinagdadaanan mo Mm. Eh, no, doc, ito po. This one's um from Arian Abril from Facebook din. Hi po. How to prevent self-harm and what if self-harming itself makes you feel good? Kasi parang we highlighted a while ago na it is a vicious cycle and maaaring merong, um, tagito, merong konting feeling of um, parang naging okay sila with self-harm. But ano po yung pa pwede nilang gawin para sa mga ganun? Okay. You know, self-harm um, really feels good, no? Talagang ano yan eh, napakabilis ng relief na nararamdaman mo pagka, pagkatapos mo siyang gawin. Kaya mm-hmm. some people actually describe it as something that is very addicting, no? Yes. And, pero yun nga lang eh, um, temporary yung relief na nararamdaman mo. Afterwards, andyan, babalik na naman yung... yung issue na nag-umpisa nung lahat na yun, babalik na naman yung yung mga thoughts and feelings na wala kang kwenta, no? Mm-hmm. Na bakit ko na naman nagawa sa sarili ko, no? Na you feel very shameful about it, no? So, it doesn't mean that it makes you feel good, that it is something that is actually good for you. No? So, there are many ways that you can do to, to help with the self-harm process. Pero you have to realize that you know, if self-harming is a habit for you, this is a long and hard journey that you have to go through. It's a process. Hindi yan yung overnight, pag narinig nyo na tong talk na to, hindi na kayo mag-self-harm, yes. you know? So, it's a, a process that a person has to go through, no? Um, first of all, when you want to self-harm, try to talk to someone, no? So, I already emphasized the need previously na kailangan mo ng kausap para merong suporta or hingahan ng pinagdadaanan mo. And this person can also serve as a diversion no? hanggang sa maging okay ka ulit. No? So, talking to someone, it's not a weakness. No? It mm-hmm. is a way of taking charge of your well-being and taking care of yourself and being healthy. No? Mm-hmm. So, try to look for a trusted person, a family member, a friend, your psychiatrist, no? a spiritual advisor that you can talk to. No? Number two, try to distract yourself. Because mm-hmm. these emotion, uh, strong emotions come in waves. No? Yes. So, um, after a certain amount of time, nawawala din sila. So, mm-hmm. distraction techniques are useful to divert your focus from doing something harmful hanggang mm-hmm. sa mawala na urge to harm yourself process. No? So, one uh, way that you can do is the five-minute rule. Na, mm-hmm. na you tell yourself, okay, for the next five minutes, hindi ko sasakpan yung sarili ko. No? Itatay mo yung sarili mo. No? Um, when that five minute passes, you tell yourself, tatry ko ulit after five minutes mm. na wag saktan yung sarili ko. No? So, try to prolong those five minutes over and over hanggang sa mawala na yung feeling na, mm. na parang gusto mo saktan yung sarili mo. Number two, um, you can try to write down yung thoughts and feelings that are distressing you sa papel. And you mm-hmm. can crumple it up, you know, rip it apart and throw it away as if you are letting go of those negative thoughts. Uh, okay. No? Okay. If you are feeling very agitated talaga, no? Very agitated, na parang gusto mong manakit, um, you can try to hit something soft like a pillow or a cushion, no? Pwede kang sumigaw doon sa pillow na mm. yun if you want, no? Pero as much as possible, don't try to hit something hard or something that can injure you. No? Yes. Um, again, with the distraction techniques, try to, um, you know, watch your favorite movie on Netflix, no? listen to your favorite music. Mm-hmm. Inis ka ng kwarto mo, no? Yung, parang lang mabisi yung, sa, yung, yung utak mo at lumipas yung oras. Again, try to utilize yung meditation and breathing techniques. Uh, muscle relaxant, mm. relaxation techniques that we have doon sa YouTube channel namin sa Medical City. Practice a lot of self-care. Ang, ang maganda rin is yung makahanap ka na activity that will physically comfort yes. and soothe you. Warm bath, no? yung warm shower, 
foot mm-hmm. massage, aromatherapy, no? um, all of these things can help soothe you when you are feeling very much distressed. Um, very important to try to remove your access from yung mga objects that can harm you, yung mga sharp objects, mga weapons. Tell your family, please pakitago itong mga blade itong mm-hmm. mga knives, scissors, and all of those things. So, para hindi ka matempt na gamitin sila. Ha? Pero ultimately, yung makakatulong talaga sa taong nagsiself-harm is to seek therapy talaga. No? We have therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. dialectical behavioral therapy, mindfulness therapy um, that you can um, try out with your psychiatrist. No? So again, please avail of telepsychiatry no para maumpisahan yung therapy that can address self harm yes and so para more of um it is a conscious effort for you to try to convert something that is abstract yung emotions na nararamdaman mo into something that is concrete like uh, katulad ng hinay like po kanina doc na para you can write it on a piece of paper and th- though for some people they would think that it is symbolical lang na parang kasi yung iba they they try to um, downplay the idea of um, parang, yun nga, parang nag-release ka ng, ng problems mo through something that is written. But then, it could really help then for you to be distracted and mailagay mo rin yung emotions mo into something more productive or parang at least a journal, something like that. Ayun. Now, Doc, right. highlighting what you said earlier na parang um, kapag nandun ka na sa idea na magsiself-harm ka, you can communicate with someone, right? Now, this question right. comes from Jeryl Glide Bagnol from Facebook also. So, paano naman daw po kapag, um, paano nila matutulungan ng isang tao kapag sila naman, yung tao yun, yung lumapit sa yun na parang, I, I, I wanna do self-harm. Kasi parang, okay, that person already acknowledged that I, I have to talk to someone. What if ako naman po yung kinausap ng tao na gusto mag-self-harm, what can I tell that person and ano yung kailangan kong gawin? Mm-mm. Okay. So, it's very important that you will be a good listening ear to this person. Yes. No? Um, you can start by um, asking, kamusta ka? No? Mm-hmm. How are you? No? Um, you can even be later on direct. Eh. Kung kunwari, may nakikita ka ng mga scars, for example, sa arms, be direct about it. Napansin ko na ano, may mga cuts ka sa arms. No? Yes. And I'm feeling very worried about you because I care a lot for you. No? Are you hurting yourself? No? So if you approach that person in a very compassionate, very respectful, mm-hmm. uh, it, very judgmental right. manner, no? Um, this person will be able to open up to you, no? At mas lalo mo siyang matutulungan pag nag-open up siya sa iyo. Um, don't make them feel guilty about what they're doing, no? Na parang hindi ka ba naawa sa magulang mo na ginagawa mo 'yan, mm-hmm. no? Hindi ka ba naawa sa sarili mo, no? Don't um, give them ultimatums like kung hindi mo tigilan 'yan, hindi na tayo friends or hindi na kita ka- kakausapin, no? Yung mga salita kasi na get nito are counterintuitive, no? Mas lalo mong ginagatungan yung mm-hmm. feelings nila na they are isolated, na they are misunderstood, that they are not important, you know, that they are powerless. No? So, mas lalong na-encourage yung pag-self-harm ng tao na yon. So, again, you have to understand as someone who is not experiencing this no this is a long and hard journey no for someone na nagse self harm no mm-hmm. um hindi lang madaling magquit sa self harming out of sheer willpower no you need to go through therapy talaga para matutunan mo yung mga coping skills no you need to practice each and every day kung paano mo babaguhin yung behavior mo and sometimes there will be days that are really bad and you will fail you know and you will go back to your old ways no? pero as a friend you need to be very supportive you need mm-hmm. to tell that person you know it's okay if it happens it doesn't mean that you're backsliding it just means na marami ka pang kailangan pang matutunan mm-hmm. kailangan pang mag-practice pa no kung paano mas strengthen yung coping mo no if they don't feel comfortable talking about it no ayo nilang mag-open up mm-hmm. you have to respect that no um 
but let them know na okay pag ready ka na nandito lang ako para makinig sa iyo no pag ready ka na um uh, siguro hanap tayo ng paraan kung paano ka tutulungan mm-hmm. and try to gently prod that person regularly no yes. even if it will take days weeks or months no be very patient about it um later on may kita mo mag-open up din yung tao na yan sa iyo yes. no um and try to um encourage uh help seeking behavior i encourage niyo sila na magpatingin no tell them na i'll try to help you as much as i can but you know i can't do it alone yes. so is it okay if we try to get support from someone else who knows better about these things no so again try to utilize telepsychiatry for your friends who are self harming yes ayan. and one thing that we want to highlight yung sinabi din natin kanina wag kayong magbibigay ng isang bagay na wala ka naman sa sarili mo so learn when to pause no hindi hindi right. po hindi po pwede na um linapitan kanya pero ibibigay at ibibigay mo rin lahat-lahat na so you always have to remember na yung mental health mo rin is um kailangan mo rin siyang protektahan ay maraming right. maraming salamat po Dr. Santa Maria this has been a very insightful discussion do you have any last words for our viewers Okay. Um thank you very much as well Nico. Thank you to your team. Malaking tulong talaga tong ginagawa ng Mental Health PH para sa sa ating uh, mga kababayan, no? Kasi napakahirap talaga nitong COVID-19 mm-hmm. na sitwasyon na pinagdadaanan natin, no? Um what I want everyone to know is kung um nahihirapan kayo sa pinagdadaanan ninyo, no? Kung feeling ninyo kailangan niyo ng suporta, Mm-hmm. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us sa aming uh, nasa psychiatric community okay. no um the mental health ph face uh, facebook page has all the information that you need para makontak po ninyo yung mga professionals po natin so there are links to hospitals like you know the medical city ncmh no um all of us in our um, community will gladly help you out no hindi kayo okay. nag-iisa Okay. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Santa Maria. And uh, meron po tayo, yung directory po natin, it's in, on your upper right corner, nandun po yung ating link. And sa ating baba, nandun po yung ating mga hotlines for um, the National Center for Mental Health and the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. Right. Um, can I just um, uh, reiterate, no? sa medical Medical City, we have um, our mm-hmm. outpatient department, yung Center for Behavioral Health. So okay. we offer um, online consults, so telepsychiatry, so for anyone who needs um, our help. So please don't hesitate to contact mm-hmm. us. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Santa Maria. Sobrang dami po namin natutunan. And for those people who have other questions, uh, huwag kayo mag-alala dahil we have our community moderators who are getting your questions and maring matulungan pa rin namin kayo. We also have our residents from the Department of Psychiatry who can also help you with those questions para masagot natin to. Ayan, bukod sa mga doktor at nar, salamat din po sa ating mga bayaning medtech, Radio Tech, AIDS, Utility, at mga gwardya sa ating mga ospital. Binibigyan po gayo din natin ang mga frontliners sa ating mga checkpoints, mga police at militar, mga community health volunteers, at mga nagtatrabaho sa botika, grocery, at palengke. Lalong-lalo na rin sa ating mga local government units, at barangay workers, at mga basurero, at iba pa. Isang malaking shoutout din sa ating hashtag mental health PH team and the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagbuo nitong ating programa. Dumarami na rin ang ating partners at major supporters ng MH Talks. Maraming maraming salamat sa Protect the Frontline, Ateneo Peers, Maya, the Feminist Collective, Pantay, the Medical City Psychiatry Department, Ateneo Psyche, Isumbing Escandor Film Festival for Health, Sangunian Commission on Mental Health, Council of Organizations of the Ateneo, Ayala Young Leaders Alumni Association Incorporated, University of Santo Tomas Central Student Council, University of the Philippines Cebu Union of Progressive Students and Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health Balik Pugad. Para sa mga nagtatanong kung saan sila magkakakuha ng counseling o psychotherapy kung kinakailangan o baka may kakilala kayo na nangangailangan ng professional help, nasa screen natin ngayon ang mga pwedeng ninyong tawagan at ilalagay din namin ito sa hashtag #mentalhealthph Facebook page. So dito na po nagtatapos ang ating ikaapat na episode ng MH Talks Protecting Our Mental Health. Versus COVID-19, produced by Hashtag Mental Health PH. 
in department with the medic in partnership with the medical city department of psychiatry. Ako po muli si Nico Bautista ng Mental Health PH and maraming maraming salamat sa pagsubaybay dito. Iniimbita po namin kayo sa susunod na episode natin sa darating na April 27, 2020. Same time, alas 12 ng tanghali at pag-uusapan naman natin kung paano natin mapa- mapapangalagaan ang ating mga lolo, lola at iba pang mga nakakatanda sa ating pamamahay. See you mga champions, stay safe and let us recover together. Thank you.